Well, speaking of the members, let's go over to our first student video question. Uh, we had a lot of uh, interest in getting uh, some answers from you, from our students. Uh, this one's from Elias Siegelman. Uh, he's at Thomas Jefferson University. We'll roll that video. Hello, Mr. President. My name is Elias from Thomas Jefferson University. Uh, in your position as President of the United States, uh, I would imagine that there were times when you went against the advice of your most trusted advisors. Uh, so as a leader, how did you find the strength to do that? And what advice would you give young leaders such as myself when faced with a similar situation? Thank you. Well, first of all, when you, when you go against the advice of your advisors, <laughs> you need to treat them with great respect. They're telling you what they believe and that's important. But uh, I'll give you an example where uh, some of my advisors were conflicted. In 1995, Mexico was about to go bankrupt and they needed an emergency loan, which only the United States could provide. Uh, the public was about 80 to 20 against it. I had just lost the Congress in the midterm elections my party had. And the Republican leaders, Newt Gingrich and Bob Dole, actually supported my position. And on the day I had to make the decision, they came to see me and said, I'm sorry, but our, our Congressional Caucus has looked at the polls and they don't want to help anybody beyond America's borders. And they tell us if we don't change our position, we'll be deposed. So we can't help you. So you'll have to go out there alone. And then the young people working for me who were my political advisors by and large and dealt with the press said, you can't do this. You just lost the Congress and 80% of the people are against it. And I said, yes, they are. But I said, my job is to win for America and the American people. And a year from now, if I don't do it, we'll have far more undocumented immigrants pouring over the borders. We'll have more illegal drugs coming over the borders. And every country south of the border will hate our guts because we turned our back on our neighbor when they had a perfectly good president and a perfectly good plan to recover. And we said no. And what will I say on that day when we're in real trouble? That, well, I'm sorry, but on the day the decision had to be made, you were 80% against it, so I couldn't do it. So I said, look, every poll is a picture of a horse race that's not over. People should think about that. There are I a lot that, of horses. <laughs> there are a lot of horses leading on the back turn. There are a lot of horses leading down the stretch who don't win. Mm. And you have to do what you think is right whenever you can. So that my advice is first encourage people to disagree with you on your team. Tell them they will never be demoted, isolated, fired. Nothing bad's going to happen if they disagree. But get it out there and then talk them through it and say, look, uh, I, I even told the young people in in my White House in my first week or two, I said, look, I got them all in the Oval Office. I said, if you ever walk in this office and say something because you think that's what I want to hear, I might as well run this whole place with computers. Nothing bad's going to happen to you for disagreeing. Now, if I make a decision you don't agree with the, and you can't live with, the honorable thing to do is resign. If you do, I will praise you on the way out the door. And I had two people resign when I signed the welfare reform law and I praised them on the way out the door. I said, this is what they believe and I honor them. And I said, I'll write a recommendation for any other place you want to work. I, I think that you have to trust people and you have to, you build loyalty, I think, by making people believe they're on a great adventure that has integrity and an honor and that you know they should serve as well as they can but i said now 
a lot of people in Washington don't do this. What they do is they disagree, but they go around and leak and give damaging leaks to the press, which are always totally anonymous. You know, I said, I think that's cowardly. If you're going to work here. Yep. But don't do anything to undermine the enterprise. If you want to undermine the enterprise, resign and start criticizing. Well, I mean, look, there are reasons for these whistleblower laws and all that, and that's because that a lot of bureaucracies don't run in an open, transparent way in the first place. Mm -hmm. But if you do have an open and transparent and trusting environment, then you should be worthy of trust as well as expecting it. Well, and I think that all comes back to the first comment that you said in response to Eliza's question. It comes down to respect, Mr. President. And I really am so glad that you mentioned that first as far as having respect for each other um, and respect for the position that you're in and looking at those facts and moving ahead with integrity in what you believe is right. I, I think it's a really powerful response you provided for Eliza. So thank you um, for that. Now, well, I, I want to switch tell, Let me tell Elias one more thing. Sure. I've been gone from the White House for more than 20 years. And still, there are large online communities of the alumni of our administration who still meet, who still talk about things, who still do things together, who keep up with their children, their families, their future, because they felt like they were part of something that mattered. And they're proud of it. And that to me is it's been one of the most rewarding things of my life seeing all these people grow older have their children their grandchildren mm -hmm. and still want to get up and go to bed every day still want to do something to make the world better oh what a fantastic feeling and uh it goes without saying that that starts with effective leadership you know that respect that listening that uh, ability to have that conversation with them and for everyone to get on board with you and that vision that you've created